Good morning, everybody. Let's all stand together and worship the Lord. God is good, amen? Let's sing, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Señor. 
Bienvenidos a todos. Thank you. I got at least one from an angle. I didn't get. Alberto, what, what? Bueno. All right. So we are here. Um, and it is um, a combined service this morning that we are going to be having. We're excited about that. We actually have um, some of the Hispanic congregation, three people that are being baptized today. And so we get to celebrate with them uh, in that. Yeah. Pavel and uh, the candidates are up there hiding. Um, and is, is he going up there? Are you? He's not getting. Oh, he's not. Oh, never mind. If you look in your bulletin, you'll know who those people are, which I thought was him, but it's not. He um, instead is on the professional cajon up here, so very nicely done there, sir. Um, we are glad that you are here. Um, hopefully, uh, you have had a great week. Um, I just want to take a moment and pause and um, just thank um, both all of the work that the people did to go into last week and your participation in that. Um, I was very blessed by the Easter service uh, this past week, and uh, Jimmy and the choir and the musicians and those who shared, I was just very blessed by all of that. And hopefully you've had an opportunity to reflect on the goodness of your God who loves you so, who has invited you into that relationship and invite you to walk alongside of him even as he lives inside of you. Um, we have an incredible God whom we serve uh, and what he has accomplished. And so I hope today um, is an outflow of the residue that you have experienced throughout the week of walking with him. Um, this is a time where we come uh, to pour back out before the Father the things that he has been doing in our lives and blessing in our lives and asking him to continue to open our eyes to see all the things that we have enjoyed over this past week and the challenges that we've faced. And let's be honest, every week is not easy. And yet this is a time that he calls us to set aside, to be here and to remember who he is and be reminded of what he does. And so I'm glad that you are here to do that. And we are getting to celebrate again new life in Christ. And we'll actually have baptisms next week as well. And so we're just going to keep the water uh, filled. And we are treating it just in case anybody's curious. But it is ready and to rock and roll, which is awesome. Um, if you have your bulletin, if you grab it real quick and just look at a couple things, um, Pastor Pavel will share with the, the Hispanic congregation um, when he gets in the water in just a little while. But uh, we do have that disaster relief training that's coming up next Saturday. Uh, the insert is in your bulletin. If you're interested in being a part of that, being equipped to be able to go with the Southern Baptist uh, Convention um, to uh, wherever they need that, um, that's a part of that process. Make sure that you go online and sign up for that. Um, on uh, the 27th, we have our, our senior event that is um, going to be down at Porter Memorial in Lexington. And if you uh, missed signing up for it, let me know, and we can get you um, hooked up for that. Um, that is going to be a Thursday. It's an all-day kind of thing with a meal, worship, concert, breakout sessions. A um, couple of other events that are coming up. We have a night of worship that's going to be on Friday, May 5th. Um, that's a time where we come and we just spend some time together as the body of Christ worshiping, um, and we just kind of set that aside. Uh, May 4th is actually the National Day of Prayer, and so we'll have some uh, activities for that. But then also on the 5th, uh, continuing that as we seek the Lord, uh, there is a church at work day, then the next day, the men's breakfast, so we're going to feed you guys. Um, ladies, you, if you're going to come help, you don't get to eat our food, um, so you may have to eat beforehand. Evidently, that's the way it worked out here. Uh, the guys will be expected to do great things um, while the ladies point. Um, no, they will work right alongside, and we, we've got some outside, um, all of the mulching, those kinds of things that we do. Um, it's a big help as we prepare for the new year, as new growth is coming up, and some not where we want it to, and so we'll work on that. I think that's everything announcement-wise. If you are visiting, we are glad that you are here. And there is an insert um, or a tear-off in the bulletin, and you can fill that out and let us know a little bit about you. Uh, there's also hopefully a, a bag that you got as you came in and you were greeted by someone. If you didn't get one of those, make sure you let us know. It uh, has information about who we are 
um, the king that we serve, and opportunity for you to connect with our church. We are here because of Jesus Christ. We are here, um, someone mentioned this in our prayer time this morning as we were praying for the service, and it, it's just hit me. Um, you know, the Tower of Babel is where we ended up with multiple languages, right? Um, and, and so multiple languages and an inability to communicate is actually a result of the fall. But what we're doing here is we're seeing part of that reconciliation process of God bringing back the voices together to sing in harmony to him. And so I pray and challenge you to embrace that as we have a God who is a God of reconciliation and restoration. Father, we ask that you would bless our time as we are here to worship your name. God, there are many, many reasons that each one of us can proclaim Jesus Christ. May we do that even as we sing, even as we come to you, that you would meet with your children, that you would bring those that are not yet your children into relationship and those that are into deeper fellowship. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. My name is Gracia Hernandez. I'm 10 years old and I'm in fourth grade and I like to play the violin. I'm here today to get baptized. Today I'm getting baptized because I want to show other people that God is always going to be my first priority and that no matter what happens to, in my life, God will always be there for me. And I understand that. And also, I want to show other people that I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that Jesus came down, took a human body, and sacrificed himself on the cross so that way God can forgive us from our sins. And even though we don't deserve it, he did it just because he loves us, all of us. We came to EBC because when we moved to the United States from El Salvador, our family didn't know how to speak English, just decided to come here so we could learn about the gospel. And we've been here for five years. I grew up my whole life knowing about God and knowing that Jesus is my savior. And so it just made it easier for me to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and savior. And I've just been, I've just grew up knowing about God my whole life because I've been surrounded by people who are Christians. Every day at nighttime, my family and I read the Bible as a family together. And then about a half a year ago, we were, at night, we were reading the Bible. And then I realized that I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. So then I asked my dad, can I accept the Lord? And then I just realized that the Lord is my Lord and Savior and he'll always be there for me. A passage that stands out to me in the Bible is Psalms 100 verse 1 and 2. Let the whole earth shout triumphantly to God. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. I would like to thank my mom, my dad, and my sister because they've taught me everything that I needed to know. And they've taught me everything about everything in the Bible. They've taught me verses. They've taught me why God loves us and they've taught me about the crucifixion and everything and every important thing in the Bible. Buenos dias. Good morning, church family. Acá estoy con Gracia Jimena. Here I am with Gracia Jimena. Y como escucharon and as you listen, Cuando me reuní con ella y le pregunté por qué quería bautizarse. And as you saw in the video, when I met with her and I asked her uh, why you wanted to be baptized, uh, hubieran visto su rostro de ella y su alegría. Me dijo, quiero que todos sepan que he puesto mi confianza en Cristo Jesús. Uh, she said, uh, with a smile in her face, I want people to know that I have followed, I have placed my trust in Jesus. And so um, I'm very happy to be here today and I, I've seen her walk, uh, her heart, her parents uh, are leaders of our church and so it's been amazing to, to watch her grow. Uh, creo que todos sabemos el corazón de, de gracia, hemos visto sus papás, líderes en, en nuestra iglesia, así es que estoy contento de, de estar 
ahora con ella y poder ver su bautismo. So, gracias, Jimena. I have you placed your trust and repent of your sins in Jesus Christ. Yes. Okay? Uh, basado en tu profesión de fe, te bautizo en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Ahora quiero eh, que conozcan a, a Dolia. Now I want to introduce you to Dolia. Ayer pasé un hermoso tiempo con Dolia y su familia. Y su familia. Uh, yesterday, I spent a great time with Dolia and her family. Ha sido maravilloso ver como Dios en todos estos años ha estado con ella. Uh, it's been wonderful to see how God, through many years, has been with her. A través de muchas pruebas y dificultades en su vida. Through many trials and difficulties in her life. En todo este tiempo, ella ha permanecido fiel, aun cuando ha tenido momentos de debilidad. In all this time, she has remained faithful, although she has struggled a little bit during this time. El día de, de ayer, ella decidió de una vez para tener la certeza de que es hija de Dios, poner su fe en Cristo Jesús. So yesterday, uh, just to have clarity in, in her walk with God, she decided to fully place her trust in Jesus Christ. Y no solamente eso, sino también quiso bautizarse. And not only that, but she also wanted to be baptized. And so we're here today to do this. Así es que estamos acá para bautizar hoy día a Dolia. Así es que Dolia, has puesto tu confianza en Cristo Jesús. ¿Te has arrepentido de tus pecados? Sí. Muy bien. Basado en tu confesión de fe, te bautizo en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Sepultados con Cristo en el bautismo... Resucitados y nueva vida. Now let me introduce you to this young man. Ahora déjeme presentarle a este joven, Franco. Uh, Franco has been Franco grew up in a Christian home. Uh, Franco creció en un hogar cristiano. And during all his years, uh, he has been learning and growing in his faith. And during all estos años, él ha estado caminando y creciendo en su fe. And at some point, he wanted his faith to be his and not of his parents. Y en un momento... Él quería que su fe sea de él por sí mismo y no la de sus padres. And so he has placed his trust in Jesus Christ and he wanted, he wanted to show that he wanted to be, to be closer to him by showing today that he wants to be baptized. Eh, el, día, el día de hoy él está acá porque él quiere estar más cerca de Dios y quiere mostrar a través de esto que está haciendo que él quiere estar más cerca de Dios. And so I'm very excited to baptize my brother Franco in Christ. Así que estoy emocionado de poder bautizar a mi hermano en Cristo, Franco. Uh, Franco, ¿te has arrepentido de tus pecados y puesto tu fe en Cristo Jesús? Sí. Muy bien. Basado en tu confesión de fe, hoy te bautizo... Okay, en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Sepultados con Cristo en el bautismo. Resucitados para nueva vida.
Thank you so much. Let me, let me pray. Father God, thank you so very much. Padre Dios, te doy gracias. I thank you for this wonderful time to witness people confessing your name. Te damos gracias por este tiempo a ver personas confesar tu nombre. May you continue to guide us in all that we do. Guíanos en todo lo que hacemos. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning. I would like to uh, direct our hearts toward a time of uh, scripture and prayer reading. Uh, we all just had the blessing of witnessing um, some baptisms. Last week, we also had the privilege of witnessing baptism. And next week, we also will get to see some more baptisms. It's a very exciting time in our church, and I'm thrilled to see what God is doing. Each of these who have been baptized first made a decision to give their life to Jesus, allow him to be in charge of their lives and follow him. And we're getting the, to see them stick to their commitments and follow Jesus through baptism. God calls us, once we make our decision to follow him, to be baptized. Today, Pastor BJ will be preach, finish preaching through the Gospel of Matthew. I went back on our website, and he started in December of 2021, like 16 months ago. So today will be the conclusion of that. And we've seen throughout the gospel that Jesus calls his disciples, others, and us to follow him. All that Jesus did while he was alive was to set an example for us to follow. It is time for us to follow. His Pastor BJ's series was called Time to Follow. In late February, 150 people in or connected to our church started the Experiencing God Bible study. This 12-week study is not designed to prepare us to pass a Bible quiz. This intensive course is designed to help move us into position in our love relationship with the Father where we're actually and practically experiencing him in our daily lives. It's time for us to follow. How are you responding to what you're learning, whether from the 16 months of time to follow messages from Matthew or the six weeks that we've already completed experiencing God? Has any of this affected the way that you're living? James 1.22 says, Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Too often, I know personally, but I'm sure many of you experience this as well, we get into this mode of life where we're satisfied with regularly hearing the truth from God's Word. We hear it. Maybe we even said, well, that was a good word from the Lord. And then we just move on to the next thing without doing anything to integrate the truth into our lives. We deceive ourselves into thinking that's enough. It's enough for me just to hear it. But it's not enough. It's time for us to follow. It's time for us to do what the Word says. Next week, we're going to begin a new sermon series chosen to help all of us to follow, to put what we're receiving into practice, to actually and practically experience God. We're going to be going through the seven realities of experiencing God. You cannot stay the way that you are and go with God. So I'd like for each of us to take some moments now in this service to pray. God is always at work around you. He is pursuing a love relationship with you, and he is inviting you to become involved in what he is doing. He doesn't do all that he's doing around us just so we can hear about it. He wants us to get involved. And so right now as we pray together, it's time for you, for me, to follow. So ask him. Ask him to show you what he's doing. He is always at work. So what is he doing around you? Ask him to help you see that. And then watch. So let's pray.
Father, I'm grateful. Grateful for the opportunity, the privilege that you've given us to see these people be baptized last week, today, and next week. I'm grateful, Lord, because it's a concrete example right in front of our faces of people being obedient and following you. Lord, I know, you know, that many times I hear great words from your scripture, from preachers in other places, and I even think to myself, that was good, but then I just walk on and move on to the next thing, Lord. I suspect, Father, there are others that struggle with that as well, and so I pray you help us not to just be people who hear your word, but to be a people who are doing what it says. Father, I thank you for Jesus, for all that he did to set an example for us, not so that we could hear it, but so that we could follow. And so I pray you open our eyes to the work that you are doing around us right now. Help us to see it. Help us to know how you want for us to join you in what you're doing. Thank you for loving us enough to want to use us. Help us, Lord, to rise up and to follow you. And I pray today that if you haven't already shown us, that you would show us today and that we would be found faithful to follow. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This next song is Waymaker. And it starts in Spanish. I want to I share these words with you. It says, aquí estás, which is... You are here. It's the same as in English. But in light of what Pastor Eric shared with us, let's remember God is here in this moment. It's easy to just move on from the moments and forget what happened. But God is here in this moment, wanting to move, wanting to be with us, to speak to us, to show us himself, to reveal his name. I want you to repeat after me. Aquí estás. Aquí estás. Aquí estás. You are here. You are here. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. He is here. Amen. Let's sing. Aquí estás. Aquí estás. Deme todos sus nombres. Te adoraré. Te adoraré. Aquí estás. Obrando en mí. Te adoraré.
aquí estás. Aquí estás, tocando mi corazón. Te That is who you 
otra vez así eres tú 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 Thank you, Lord. You are the way maker. You are the light in the darkness, Jesus. Day and night.
For you are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. We are in Matthew chapter 28, and we are finishing today. Okay, estamos en Mateo 28 y estamos terminando. Last words matter. We've Los, been journeying for about a year and a half or so. Las palabras finales son importantes. Hemos estado caminando por cerca de un año en el libro de Mateo. And we've noticed how Matthew has grouped themes, he's grouped parables, he's grouped events to be able to give truth. Y podemos notar que Mateo agrupa temas, agrupa tópicos y esto es lo que hemos estado viendo. Helping us to see a proper perspective and grasp significance of each line written. Podemos ver eh, cómo esto nos da perspectiva en todo lo que hemos estado haciendo. Looking over at John, we know that relationships matter to John. Mirando a Evangelio de Juan, podemos ver cómo las relaciones personales le importan a él. It was a key part of who John was and what he was doing through the theme of his gospel. Era parte importante acerca de quién era Juan y un tema importante en su Evangelio. He tells us so because he says at the end of his book that he's writing so that we know that Jesus is the Messiah. Y nosotros sabemos porque él nos lo dice al final de su libro, libro que él está escribiendo estas cosas para que sepan que Jesús es el Mesías. And that we can have life in his name. Relationship was key for John. Y cómo podemos tener vida en él. Las relaciones personales era algo clave en el Evangelio de Mateo. But for Matthew, he chooses to leave us with some different words of Jesus, the Great Commission. Pero para Mateo, en su parte final, nos va a dar algo diferente, nos va a dar la gran comisión. The great call to follow Jesus' life was a life dedicated to passing it on to others. La misión que vamos a ver de Jesús, de pasar todo lo que Él había enseñado y hecho en otros. And so, Jesus, first through the apostles, and then through all the generations of the disciples to follow, would continue to pass on the good news even to today. Así es que primero con los apóstoles, con los discípulos, y después a las generaciones que continuarían para que puedan continuar pasando lo que Jesús les había enseñado a ellos. In fact, this morning, we've already observed three individuals as they've responded in faith and fellowship to that gospel that has been proclaimed through generations. De hecho, esta mañana hemos observado a tres personas que han respondido en fe y han decidido seguir a Jesús a través del Evangelio proclamado a través de la participación en el bautismo. Of course, over the course of this sermon series, Time to Follow, we've routinely sought as those preaching to give you points of application. Hemos estado mirando durante esta serie de sermones titulada Tiempo para seguir, 
cómo hemos estado buscando la aplicación a través de, de puntos semana por semana y cómo Jesús nos desafía a seguirlo a Él y estar devoto en sus mandamientos. Almost weekly. We have challenged you to follow Jesus closer, to follow his commands more devotedly, and to follow Jesus' instructions with more intentionality. Y no solamente hemos estado siguiendo a Jesús y sus mandamientos, también sus instrucciones para que podamos seguirlo a Él intencionadamente. And so, this morning's message is titled by the same title as the series, Time to Follow. Esta mañana el título de este mensaje es Tiempo para Seguir. Given the, the work done by Christ at Easter, We celebrated last Sunday. The only appropriate response is follow. A la luz de la resurrección de Jesús y lo que estuvimos viendo la semana pasada, la única respuesta apropiada es seguirle. I'm going to read Matthew chapter 28, 16 to the end. If you have your place, would you stand? It's going to be Vamos in both languages. Vamos a leer Mateo 28, 16 a 20. Por favor, si pueden levantarse. I will read the English side. Hmm. Beginning in verse 16. But the eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had designated. When they saw him, they worshipped him, and some were doubtful. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son. And the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Let's pray. Father, would you speak to us this morning? Would you help us to walk with you? Would you help us to see what we need to see? Padre. Puedes tú, Dios, guiarnos y hacernos ver lo que tú quieres que veamos. We love you. We ask you to open your word now to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Te amamos y te pedimos que abras ahora nuestros ojos. En el nombre de Jesús. Amen. All right. So let's dive in. I'm going to kind of use this idea of following throughout the entire message. Muy bien, ahora vamos a estar mirando y, y quiero que vean que el, el tema que vamos a estar mirando durante todo este sermón es el tema de seguir a Jesús. The first y, thing seguir. is this, there is no better time to follow. El primer punto que quiero que vean es que no hay mejor tiempo para seguir a Jesús. We are all at different points of our faith. Even the 11 disciples were at different points of their faith after the resurrection. Nosotros estamos en diferentes lugares en nuestro caminar de nuestra fe. Aún inclusive los once discípulos estaban en diferentes, digamos, a niveles en su fe también. They all went to Galilee, though, and some were ready to believe and worship, and others were trying to wrap their minds around what was happening. Vamos a ver cómo van a estar ahí, van a verlo en Galilea, van a estar listos para adorarlo. Y creer en él. I appreciate the significance of Matthew's transparency here. Yo aprecio la, la sinceridad en Mateo en esta parte cuando dice estas cosas. You see, we might think that this is the final exciting moments of the book. Quizás podamos ver que esta es la parte emocionante final de este libro. When Matthew's wrapping it up with some inspiring final thoughts. Cuando Mateo está finalmente inspirado, terminando sus últimos pensamientos. And yet he throws in, some worshipped, but others doubted. Pero inclusive en ese contexto va a decir, algunos adoraron y otros dudaron. Why do you cast a negative light on that shining moment at this final declaration? ¿Por qué pondría esta parte en estos momentos, digamos, que debería brillar en la vida de Jesús? You see, I believe in part, through it, 
the Holy Spirit is reminding us that following Jesus isn't necessarily natural and it's not necessarily easy. Yo creo que esto nos recuerda que el seguir a Jesús, número uno, no es natural ni tampoco fácil. Hebrews 11.1 1. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things unseen. Hebreos 11.1 La fe, la certeza de lo que no se ve, la convicción de lo que se espera. These disciples had had their lives wrecked over the last couple years, especially over the last couple days. Estos discípulos habían tenido sus vidas, digamos, golpeadas en unas semanas antes después de lo que había pasado con Jesús. That which they may have thought was happening, the coming of the Messiah's kingdom, divine restoration, wasn't yet to be had. El deseo que ellos estaban esperando que el reino de Dios llegara y se ha inaugurado todavía no iba a pasar. There was more coming first. Había aún algo más que primero tenía que llegar. Matthew, several times before, has pointed out the struggles had by the disciples. Mateo nos ha mostrado esta lucha en los discípulos con respecto a esto. Which is a beautiful reminder of the struggles that remain for us today. Que es un hermoso recordatorio para nosotros de las luchas que también tenemos nosotros como creyentes. You see, some were doubtful, but you look at the word there in the Greek language and it means two things. To have doubts concerning something or to be uncertain about taking a particular course of action. Dice que algunos dudaron. Algunos dudaron. Esta palabra habla de aquellos tenían dudas concerniente a algo o no estaban seguros acerca de qué es lo que ellos deberían hacer en una situación particular. And Jesus knows that these men are struggling and yet to his disciples, all of them, he gives the same command. Go make disciples. Y aún así en este contexto va a decirle a todos sus discípulos no longer would Jesus walk the earth and proclaim the kingdom. He would now give it to witnesses to do on his behalf. Les va a decir que vayan y hagan discípulos. Ya no más Jesús va a caminar en la tierra para proclamar el reino de Dios. Él va a dejar a sus discípulos para que continúen esa tarea. He would empower them and he would commission them to spread the truth. Los iba a empoderar y los iba a mandar para que compartan la verdad. You see, today, if you're in a relationship with Christ, you are called into that same journey. Hoy día, si tú tienes una relación personal con Jesús, tú estás llamado también a ese mismo viaje, caminar con Dios. Wherever you are, with whatever you struggle, with whatever insecurities you have, ambiguities, reservations, hesitations, which he has all written down, you are still called to walk as you can in this moment living out that gospel. Donde quiera que tú estés, lo que sea que estés luchando, ya sea con inseguridades, ambigüedades, algunas reservaciones, dudas, lo que sea, tú todavía estás llamado a caminar en este momento acercándote más a él, más a él a Jesús, proclamando su mensaje del evangelio, la verdad. And that means even if you're figuring it out on the fly, you're still inviting others to do that as the Holy Spirit leads you. Aun cuando esto signifique que todo no está claro todavía, pero tú vas a continuar y vas a continuar aprendiendo mientras caminas con él. Hear me in this. It will look different for each one of us, but it should look like something for all of us. Escúchenme en esto. Esto va a lucir diferente en cada uno de nosotros. Pero saben una cosa, va a significar algo en cada uno de nosotros. You see, there's no excuse because there's no better time to follow than today. Así es que no hay excusa. No hay excusa porque... No hay mejor tiempo que seguir a Jesús que hoy. The question is why, and that's where we go to in the next verse. Y la pregunta es por qué, y vamos a ver eso en el siguiente versículo. The second point is this, there is no one more worthy to follow. 
El segundo punto es no hay nadie más digno de seguir. We just sang it. You are worthy of it all. Ya lo cantamos hace unos minutos antes. Eres digno de todo. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth, Jesus says. Toda autoridad me ha sido dada en el cielo y en la tierra, Jesús va a decir. Listen to a couple passages. Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 through 11. Being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Dice Filipenses 2, 8 al 11, Se humilló a sí mismo, haciéndose obediente hasta la muerte, hasta la muerte en la cruz. Por eso Dios le dio el más alto honor y el más excelente de todos los nombres, para que ante ese nombre concebido a Jesús, doblen todas las rodillas en el cielo y en la tierra y debajo de la tierra, y todos reconozcan que Jesucristo es Señor para gloria de Dios Padre. Paul can't get enough of it. He goes on in Ephesians chapter 1, 19 through 22. He says this, And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his great might, which he worked in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come, And he's put all things under his feet, gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Y Pablo va a continuar ahora en Efesios, también hablando de este tema, y va a decir en Efesios capítulo 1, 19 a 22. Y cuál es la extraordinaria grandeza de su poder para con nosotros los que creemos, conforme a la eficacia de la fuerza de su poder, el cual obró en Cristo cuando le resucitó de entre los muertos y le sentó a su diestra en los lugares celestiales, muy por encima de todo principado, autoridad, poder, dominio y de todo nombre que se nombra, no solo en este siglo, sino también en el venidero, y todo sometió bajo sus pies y a él lo dio por cabeza sobre todas las cosas. A la iglesia. One more. Colossians, Uno más. Colossians 1, 15 through 20. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him are all things, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on heaven or in earth, making peace by the blood of his cross. Uno más, Colosenses 1, 15 al 20. Dice, Él es la imagen del Dios invisible, el primogénito de toda creación, porque en Él fueron creadas todas las cosas, tanto en los cielos como en la tierra, visibles e invisibles, ya sean tronos o dominios o poderes o autoridades, todo ha sido creado por medio de Él y para Él. Y Él es antes de todas las cosas y en Él todas las cosas permanecen. Él es también la cabeza del cuerpo que es la iglesia. Y Él es el principio, el primogénito de entre los muertos. A fin de que Él tenga en toda la primacía. Porque agradó al Padre que en Él habitara toda la plenitud. Y por medio de Él reconciliar todas las cosas consigo. Habiendo hecho la paz por medio de la sangre de su cruz. Por medio de Él, repito, ya sean las que están en la tierra o las que están en los cielos. John Piper goes to say, describe Jesus this way. The God-man, Jesus Christ, the crucified and risen Savior, triumphant over sin and Satan, exalted at the right hand of God, and installed as the Lord of the universe. El predicador John Piper describe a Jesús de esta manera. El Dios hombre, Jesucristo, crucificado y resucitado Salvador, triunfante sobre el pecado y Satanás, exaltado a la derecha de Dios, eh, instalado como Señor del Universo. So, I don't know about you, 
But it sure makes sense that if we're going to follow someone, that it would be the best someone we could possibly follow. Yo no sé acerca de ti, pero si es que queremos seguir a alguien, ese alguien que deberíamos seguir debería ser lo mejor que podamos escoger. That's exactly who we have in Christ, the risen King of Kings who created all things and holds all things in his hands. Y eso es lo que tenemos en la persona de Cristo, el Rey de Reyes resucitado que creó todas las cosas y que sostiene todo en su Think on the other side. What, why would we follow the orders of another as the overarching voice and director of our lives? Ahora piensen por un momento en esta pregunta. ¿Por qué deberíamos seguir las órdenes de alguien, de otro más, como la voz que dirige nuestras vidas? I mean, what, what are our choices, our alternatives? A boss? A parent? Ourselves? ¿Cuáles son nuestras opciones? Un jefe, un padre, nosotros mismos. Even the best of these individuals holds no power in the universe. Aún el mejor de estos que podamos elegir, ninguno de ellos sostiene poder en todo el universo. And neither will they perfectly lead nor perfectly control all my situations. Y ninguno de ellos perfectamente podrían dirigir o controlar todas las situaciones. So often we're actually reminded of the opposite, how poorly we actually do in leading ourselves and others. De hecho, muchas veces se nos va a recordar que tan pobremente podemos nosotros liderar a otros o a nosotros mismos. Matthew makes it very clear. Our best choice, our only wise and lofty choice is Jesus, who has authority over all things, which includes me. Mateo nos pone claramente esto. Nuestra, lo que mejor podemos elegir, nuestra, nuestra elección más sabia y más maravillosa está en la persona de Jesús, quien tiene autoridad sobre todas las cosas, que inclusive me incluye a mí. So no better time to follow, no better one to follow, and next, no better mission to follow. Así es que no hay mejor tiempo que seguir a Jesús. No hay nadie mejor a quien seguir más que a Jesús. Y por último, no hay mejor misión que seguir. There is no mission more urgent for us to follow. No hay misión más urgente que seguir. John 14:6. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Juan 14, 6, Jesús dijo, Soy el camino y la verdad y la vida. Nadie viene al Padre sino por mí. Acts 4, 12. Salvation in no one else. There's no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. Hechos 4, 12. Y no hay salvación en nadie más porque... No hay otro nombre dado a los hombres bajo el cielo en quien tengamos salvación. I don't know about you, but I want to be part of something that matters. Yo no sé con respecto a ti, pero quiero ser parte de algo que vale la pena. Something that's lasting, something that's significant. Algo que es duradero, algo significante. Isn't that often the complaint of the J-O-B, the job, that it's not seen as an end but a means. No es acaso la, la queja que podamos tener con, con el trabajo es, es algo que, que lo vemos como el final y no como el medio. You see, God, through the death, burial, and resurrection of his son, through that son, invites you into the greatest and most important work this side of eternity. Dios, a través de la muerte, a través de la sepultura y resurrección de su Hijo, a través de su Hijo nos invita en esta obra maravillosa y más importante en este lado de la eternidad. You see, with eternity in balance, the message of the gospel cannot be absent from our lives and mouths. Teniendo un balance en este lado de la eternidad, el mensaje del Evangelio no puede ser ausente de nuestras vidas y de nuestras bocas. There is no work more significant in which to engage, nor any work more lasting in its implications and efforts. 
No hay obra más significante en la cual podamos nosotros estar involucrados. No hay ninguna obra que sea más duradera que el predicar el Evangelio. You see, it's right to say that Matthew, Matthew's call here carries an as-you-go meaning, meaning that the routines and activities of life which we naturally encounter are to be the means by which we are fleshing out the gospel mission and sharing it with others. It is correct to say that in this great commission, when they say, vayan, the significance is, mientras vayan, Y esto tiene que ver con en cada rutina, actividad de nuestras vidas, naturalmente vamos a tener la oportunidad de, de encontrar los medios para compartir este evangelio, para llevar la misión de Dios con otros. There is no hope outside of Jesus Christ. He alone died. He alone rose again. He alone offers victory to us through faith. No hay esperanza fuera de Jesús. Él, él es el único que murió por nuestros pecados. Él es el único que resucitó y nos ofrece victoria a través de la fe. Therefore, there's no higher calling or directive ever received by humanity than to be the witnesses of this truth to the world. Por lo tanto, no hay ningún llamado más grande recibido por la humanidad que el de ser testigos de esta gran verdad a todo el mundo. Nothing can be more urgent than this. Everything else on earth is ultimately, to varying degrees, temporary. Nada puede ser más urgente que esto. Todo lo demás en la tierra últimamente se va a, a transformar en algo temporal. Thus, all things must necessarily be processed through the lens of the Great Commission's reality. Jesus has invited us into mission with eternally lasting impact. Por lo tanto, todas las cosas necesariamente tienen que ser procesadas a través de estos lentes de la gran comisión. Jesús nos ha invitado en esta misión con resultados eternos. No better time, no greater one, no mission more important. And now there's no better thing to do and to follow. No hay mejor tiempo, no hay nadie mejor a quien seguir más que a Jesús. No hay misión más urgente y significativa y por último, no hay cosa mejor que hacer que seguir a Jesús. You see, verse 20, he calls them to teach them everything that I have commanded you. Van a ver en el versículo 20 dice, enseñándoles a obedecer todo lo que les he mandado. The greatest teachers understand their content. Los maestros más grandes entienden su contenido. They grasp how things work, how things relate. Ellos entienden cómo las cosas funcionan, cómo las cosas se relacionan. They see the big picture. They're able to walk others through it and both understand and apply it. Ellos ven el cuadro final y pueden ellos ayudar a otros a caminar y lo entienden y lo aplican. I'll tell you, I was a former math teacher. Uh, les quiero contar, yo era eh, profesor de matemáticas. You were too? Tú también. Just, just kidding, sí. There is nothing more exciting than empowering kids to navigate concepts and excel when quizzed or tested. No había nada más emocionante que poder enseñar a los niños y poder eh, ayudarles a navegar, entender conceptos para que después puedan eh, ser examinados con, los, con las pruebas y todo eso. My job was to help them to be successful in the classroom and hopefully with some transferable things to life. Mi trabajo era poder ayudarles a que tengan éxito en el salón y también que puedan esto transportarlo a su vida. But consider the command of Christ. Pero quiero que consideren el mandamiento de Cristo. Christ, the one who knows the universe perfectly. Cristo, el único que conoce el universo perfectamente. The one who designed it and knows it how best for it to operate. El que lo diseñó, el que sabe cómo opera. 
the one who knows every situation in every moment fully. Aquel que conoce cada situación, com cada momento completamente. Completely and objectively, the one who knows best how we should live, move, act, and react. Aquel que sabe cómo deberíamos vivir, movernos, actuar y reaccionar. Wouldn't his teachings be the best ones to follow? No creen que su enseñanza no serían lo mejor que nosotros podemos tener para seguir? I mean, seriously, if we believe that he is the risen son of God with power and sovereignty. Realmente, escuchen, si es que realmente creemos que él es el hijo de Dios resucitado con poder y soberanía. If we believe he is good and works all things for our good. Si nosotros creemos que él es bueno y que todas las cosas obran para nuestro bien. If we would believe that his thoughts and ways are above our own. Si es que nosotros creemos que sus pensamientos y sus caminos están por encima de los nuestros. Does it not necessarily follow that we should cherish the things that he's revealed? ¿Acaso eso no significaría que nosotros seguiríamos las cosas y amaríamos las cosas que él nos ha revelado? And long for a greater understanding and application to our lives. Y, y anhelaríamos por cómo poder aplicar todo eso a nuestras vidas. Jesus knows that in his authority and with his wisdom and sovereignty, he grasps all things that his commands are best. Jesús sabe que en su autoridad, en su sabiduría, en su soberanía, que conoce todas las cosas, que sus mandamientos son los mejores. I mean, it's, it's in his confidence in who he is that leads us to such confidence in calling the teaching, his calling of the teachings and obedience to what he said. Quiero, quiero que vean esta confianza de Jesús basada en quién es él y la seguridad de que sus mandamientos son lo que nosotros necesitamos. But you see, that's who he is. His plan and purpose is always right, always true and sure, always best. Recuerden, sus planes y propósitos son siempre correctos, siempre verdaderos, siempre lo mejor. Why would we follow guiding principles and so-called truths which are not in agreement with what Jesus provided us? A la luz de esto, ¿por qué deberíamos seguir otras cosas que no están en línea con sus palabras? Why do we go quickly settle for things that are not best? ¿Por qué rápidamente nos vamos y seguimos otras cosas que no son lo mejor? Jesus has called us to teach and observe all that he's commanded because he knows they are the best. Jesús nos ha mandado a que podamos obedecer todo lo que él nos ha enseñado porque sabe que son las mejores cosas. There's no better life for us than to live the one that's in conformity with him and with his commands. No hay mejor vida que podamos tener aquella vida que está en conformidad con sus mandamientos y sus caminos. No better time, no one greater, no greater mission, no better truths. No mejor tiempo, no no hay alguien más grande, no hay misión más grande, no hay verdad más grande que seguir. But you may say that's not so easy to do. Pero quizás tú puedas decir, no es tan fácil de hacer todo eso. You walk out the door, so many things confront us and battle against our efforts. Al salir de este lugar, tenemos tantas cosas y tantas luchas. We want to apply these things and see success in our lives, but it's hard. Queremos nosotros seguir a Jesús y aplicar sus enseñanzas en nuestras vidas, pero es difícil. Many things seek to thwart, derail, destroy our journey, and our mission. Muchas cosas quieren que podamos nosotros rendirnos, podamos nosotros ir tras otras cosas. And that's why there's one more thing to remember. Y por eso hay una cosa más para recordar. There is no one better to be with us as we follow. No hay nadie mejor que esté con nosotros. Verse 20 ends with this, the greatest news. And lo, I am with you even to the end of the age. Versículo 20 dice, y yo estoy con ustedes todos los días hasta el fin del mundo. This is the promise of our Savior. 
Esta es la promesa de nuestro Salvador. He will be with us personally and intimately in all of this. Él va a estar con nosotros personalmente, íntimamente en todo esto. He has promised neither to leave us nor forsake us. Él ha prometido no dejarnos ni abandonarnos. Never to cast us out or cast us aside. Nunca dejarnos. He's promised to work in us, with us, and through us. Él ha prometido obrar en nosotros, con nosotros, a través de nosotros. In Ephesians 2.10, we're his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we would walk in them. In Ephesians capítulo 2, versículo 10, porque somos su obra, creados en Cristo Jesús para buenas obras que él preparó de antemano para que pudiéramos caminar en ellas. Philippians 2.13, it's God who then is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Filipenses 2.13 dice, porque es Dios que obra en ustedes el hacer y también para sus propósitos. In fact, it will only be in relationship and acknowledgement of both his presence with you and his power through you that you're going to see success. De hecho, va a ser solamente en esta relación personal, en este reconocimiento de ambos, su presencia y su poder a través de nosotros que vamos a tener éxito. John 15:5 I'm the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Juan 15, 5 nos recuerda, Yo soy la vid, ustedes los pámpanos. Aquel que permanece en mí y yo en él, da mucho fruto, porque separados de mí, no pueden hacer nada. So that's why it's been our theme this year. Así es que ese ha sido nuestro tema este año. A focus on the presence and relationship with Christ. El enfoque en la presencia y relación con Cristo. We want to encounter God to experiencing Him. Queremos encontrar a Dios, queremos experimentarlo a Él. So that we are reminded and empowered by Him even as we obey and follow Him. Para que podamos ser recordados y empoderados por Él para que podamos obedecerle y seguirle. And so here is the application. Así es que esta es la aplicación. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Id pues y hacer discípulos de todas las naciones. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Bautizándolos en el nombre del Padre y del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Teaching them to observe all that he commanded us. Enseñándoles a guardar todo lo que os he mandado. And lo, he is with us always, even to the end of the age. Y he aquí, yo estoy con ustedes todos los días hasta el fin del mundo. It's time to follow. Es tiempo de seguir. That's the call. Ese es el llamado. It's to be our resolve. Ese debería ser nuestra decisión. It's our kind king's intention and command. Es nuestro deseo de hacerlo. Let's pray. Oremos. Father, thank you for the gospel of Matthew. Padre, gracias por el Evangelio de Mateo. Thank you for the truths that we have seen as we have walk, walked along the way. Gracias por las verdades que hemos visto al estar en este libro. Thank you that as we end this book, it is not an end. Gracias porque al terminar este libro no es un final. For you have called us into the journey alongside. Porque tú nos has llamado en este caminar junto contigo. You have committed to your people, your mission. Tú, es, tú estás comprometido a nosotros y estás comprometido a tu misión. And you have promised to be in us and with us as we go. Y has prometido estar en nosotros y con nosotros al ir. God, help us to walk in light of the gospel. Padre, ayúdanos a caminar a la luz del Evangelio. Help us to respond even this morning. Ayúdanos inclusive a responder esta mañana. To what you are calling us to do. A lo que tú quieres llamarnos que nosotros hagamos. In Jesus' name. En el nombre de Jesús. So let me, let me pray so we can be dismissed. Thank you so much. Uh, it was a, a good time to be here with you guys. Uh, let me pray. Vamos a orar, hermanos. Tuvimos un buen tiempo acá juntos. Father, Father, you, you are good. Padre, tú eres bueno. Father, your love is amazing. 
Padre, tu amor es maravilloso. Father, we, we thank you so very much that, that we can gather together and, and sing to you and, and listen to your word. Padre, te damos gracias de que podemos adorarte, podemos cantarte a ti. Father, we thank you for Jesus who came on earth to begin this new realm, to inaugurate this realm in which we are a part. Padre, te damos gracias por Jesús que enviaste para inaugurar tu reino acá en la tierra. Father, we love you. Padre, te amamos. And as we live, Lord, y al salir, Padre, may we meditate on what we've heard today. Al salir, Padre, que podamos meditar en lo que hemos escuchado. Father, we are here to testify about Jesus. We are here to share this amazing news that you have sent Jesus to restore us, to take care of our sin, but also, Lord, to take care of evil. And one day you will reign forever, Father. Padre, tú nos dejaste acá para testificar de ti, para restaurar todas las cosas. And so, Father, we... Thank you again for your presence with us. Te damos gracias por tu presencia. In the name of Jesus, we pray. En el nombre de Jesús, oramos. Amen.